Hi everybody, Barnaby here from Electric Car Converts. This is the Defender you'll have seen in a lot of our Instagram and maybe some YouTube videos. It's got a Tesla Model 3 motor underneath. It's got a 55 kilowatt battery pack up the front. We're here at the where they do the Fell Hill Climb, which is a hill climb in East Sussex where we're based, where they send sort of classic sports cars up the hill and we thought we'd come here, do a bit of filming, show you what this thing can do. So um, without further ado, Flying up the hill. Have a look out front. Yeah, this this thing is pretty damn quick. Right, we're at the top of the hill now, um, in the electric Defender. So, quick look at where we are. We've got London that way, about 60 miles that way. We've got the ocean couple of miles that way um, so a beautiful part of the world that we are lucky to have our workshop a beautiful part of the world to roam around in your old defender in um, but even more so because it's electric now if you look closely over that way you might not be able to see it on the camera but there's a whole load of wind vanes on the on a wind farm out there um, so a lot of our power around this part of the world is powered by the wind um, which is ultimately what charges up this battery pack, so that's pretty cool. Um, on the outside, she's a 1986-87 Defender. Um, obviously, she doesn't look it because she's got a new fancy um, facelift on it, new bumper grille. It's got twisted branding all over it, so it's sort of made to look like a twisted car. That's not by us, that's, that's how it was when, when it was given to us. But underneath it is still an 80s Land Rover, um, although you wouldn't really know it anymore. So come in and have a look at the conversion we've done. First things first is this big gray box. Now this is where all of the batteries in the car are. We choose to put as many as we can in the front and then only leave them in the front because it helps a lot with, well, the weight is where it is supposed to be originally and it really helps with wiring and we don't want to use up any space in the load area, etc. So that's the sort of a first way to keep the cost down, I suppose. In there are 55 kilowatt hours. Now, 55 kilowatt hours is the equivalent of a Tesla Model 3, which has 60 kilowatt hours in it. So slightly less um, and they're all in this box. They are, this box is made up of LG Chem battery modules, which are actually out of a um, VW ID3 series. So they come, they come new from LG Chem. I think they're made in Poland, um, but they are destined for the ID3s. We've just been able to repurpose them into this box and actually get them new, which is something that's not very easy to do. You'll see on our other conversions, we use our re recycled Tesla batteries, for example, but it's nice to have a new battery pack in there. Um, a couple of important things to note on the battery pack. We've got a battery management system in there. So battery management is looking at the temperatures of all 90, 96 odd cells in there, um, making sure they're all happy and not, nothing's getting too hot or too cold. Not that battery packs get hot, but it's more of a, it's more of a keeping them all in equilibrium because if one battery's hot and one battery's cold, then they discharge at different rates. So that's quite important to keep everything equalized, which is what the first cooling system does here. So a tiny little header tank um, and a tiny little radiator that sits in there um, is what is just circulating water backwards and forwards through the battery pack. Also in here, we've got um, contact controllers, which is basically an ignition system. So that's when you turn the key, it allows high voltage to go towards the motor, towards whatever else. Um, and then the other main, well, the other main thing in here is a CCS controller. Now CCS stands for Combined Charging System. Um, and that basically means that it can fast charge really, really quickly. Um, I think this car can charge at about 70 kilowatts, um, which is the equivalent of going 20 to 80% in sort of around half an hour. Um, which brings me on to my point of 
instead of saying, right, I want 100 kilowatt hours, you know, the same as the biggest Tesla they do, you know, the, whatever, get as many batteries in it as you can, we say, let's go smaller on the battery pack and go faster on the charging. That way, price is kept, well, to a minimum, let's say, um, but so is weight, um, which is also obviously very important in, because, Batteries are heavy. This is 320 kilos alone. Okay, so you know there's a lot of weight in in batteries, and we don't want to put double or triple that, as some clients Im immediately ask. We prefer they go smaller with faster charging. You can still do 120, 140 miles in this car, which let's say gets you to London and back for us, which is plenty really. If I was going to London and back, I'd probably take my other car um, because it seems that people who have Defenders also have another car to do sort of a longer journeys in. Or I might borrow, you know, my friend's car or something if I was going to Cornwall, for example, because even new electric cars, you'd struggle to do that. Although it's wholly possible in this, you'd just be stopping for the odd half an hour McDonald's, let's say, um, while you charged her up. So that's the main event in here. What you've also got is under here, it's covered in pollen now, um, it must be summer, but there's a control board in there, a whole load of 12 volt electronics in there, so things like relays, um, CAN bus networks, etc., all sit in there that are talking to things like the dials, things like water pumps, etc., just to turn various systems on and off, so they're all sitting in there. Here we've got um, the heater, now that's an original um, heater box, obviously it's been painted, but in there it's got high voltage, you can see the two orange coming out there. Now that means that there's a high, vol high voltage heater element in there, which is, think of it as a hairdryer element, i.e. you flick it on, all the original fans and all the original ductings are still in there, but you get instant heat. So that's really nice, it instantly demists your windscreen, you get hot feet in these. And anyone who drives Defenders will know that that's a big upgrade from what they used to have, which is basically no heating at all. What else we've got in here? If you, if you come in, we can look at the AC charger. Um, so you can see the, well, anyone who's changed a house plug will recognize the blue, the yellow and green and the brown as an AC plug. And this charging box turns that into DC. So plus and minus out, um, which is going into the battery box up there. So that's 99% of the time your charging will go through that. Now that might be your three pin socket on the side of your garage or out the front of your house on an extension lead. Um, that's how I charge mine anyway. Or you can have a seven kilowatt home charger installed, like a pod point or something like that that sits on the wall that you then plug in. That will charge at seven kilowatts, which is a full charge and let's call it seven, eight hours from zero to 100%, whereas a three pin is more of an overnight charge. Um, so significantly slower at two or three kilowatts. Um, so that's charging on the AC side. We've also got something here called a DC-DC converter. Um, so that's this little thing here with all the air cooling fins on it. Now what that's do is doing is taking high voltage in, so 350 odd volts in, and spitting out 14 volts. Um, now the reason we need a 14 volt um, supply is because that's what's running things like the headlights, things like the wipers, um, washers, and all the other little 12 volt systems in the car. So, so think about your gauges, think about your water pumps, etc., etc. All very important that they run off something because they don't have an alternator anymore as they did in the original diesel or petrol engine. Um, so other things in here, we've got the cooling system. So perhaps come around here and, and you can look in this way. Um, two radiators, one, two, quite little sort of motorbike style ones, and then two big fans on the back of them. Now, as I mentioned before, this one does um, the battery box. So just circulating sort of lukewarm, cool water around the batteries. That might be like at 30 degrees or so. Um, and then this one is what goes straight down to the motor. So from this header tank, we're going into um, radiator all the way down underneath to a very high flow pump, which means that we're actually taking a lot of water through the motor, which is how it cools the inverter, etc., cetera, um, through various oil systems in there. But um, that's those two. They're built into the original frame. So this frame used to have the huge um, radiator and intercooler of, I don't know, a TDI or a TD5 or something like that. Um, so that's cooling. We've also got here throttle. Um, so that's a Model 3 throttle. 
that has been modified to, to fit onto the original throttle cable there. Um, so that's obviously connected to the pedal inside. Um, and then the only other thing in here is if you come back round, is power steering. So that's shaft driven power steering. Now that's um, one of our optional upgrades and it basically means that there's, if you have the steering column, you have a worm drive on the steering column, which ultimately is what turns your wheels rather than the hydraulic pump, which we put in other cars. Or originally this would have been, you know, a hydraulic pump going off the PTO of some sort. So that's steering, um, not something you have to have. I think it's about a 1500 pound option. Um, on top of our standard power steering system, which is also fine. This one's just sort of extra fancy. And talking about extra fancy, um, the final thing to look at in here is the Tesla iBooster system. So this came out of a Tesla Model S. Um, and what it is, is it's basically a brake master cylinder that is assisted by an electric motor inside there, which helps you push your foot down to the floor. So in an ice car, so a diesel or a petrol, when you press your foot on the brake, there's a suction from a servo in, well, from the engine, which goes through basically a servo, which is what sucks your foot to the floor to make braking a little bit easier. We obviously lose that sucking. A, a pump is, you know, a vacuum pump is quite noisy. So now we, we put in these Tesla I boosters, um, which just make things a little bit quieter. Um, and also means you have incredible brakes really for it for as far as the defender goes that's pretty much as good as your brakes get because that also activates regenerative braking and makes that more and more so this thing really does stop as fast as it starts um, so that's always good um, so that's what's under the bonnet now if you come around to the side you can see charging so the way that um, CCS charging works is it's combined so in hole one you have AC so anything coming out of the grid, let's call it. So anything out of your three pin socket, your, your supermarket charging point, the one you get installed in your house will go in there. Seven kilowatt charging, which is sort of a standard in electric vehicles. So sort of any car can charge off that. Um, and then underneath there on the same plug is your DC charging. Um, so those two holes at the bottom. Now DC charging is what is super duper fast. Um, now underneath from a wiring perspective, all you've actually got is two big fat HV orange cables that are going directly from there straight into the box up the front. And that means that it's, it doesn't use that charger up the front. It only uses, well, data going in and then just two big feeds from those big ones you see on the side of the road in London or in the service stations or places like that where you need a very fast charge. Um, but to be honest, most of the time, in fact, in my electric car, I think I've used uh, DC fast charging once. It's really not all it's set out to be, but it, what it does allow you to do is go on that one long journey a year or whatever you want to do. Um, so you just have to stop once or twice, spank it full of charge and off you go. Inside, we have only two pedals now. Um, as you can see, throttle on the right, that's an original throttle pedal and then brake on the left. No clutch anymore, um, which is nice. You'll also see we've flattened the floor there. So instead of having a big gear stick, um, etc., there, it's just a nice flat floor where your dog can sit or where my dog sits. Um, the origin, that's, that's actually a really nice feature because it gives uh, actually what is a very cramped area to sit a lot more space. So you can put a third seat in the middle, for example, and for your kid or whatever, and you, they can actually put their foot on the ground rather than straddling the gear stick like they used to. Um, so that's a nice little feature. Also in here, we have new, new gauges. Um, so showing battery temperature, battery level, the amp draw and the speed. And then drive and reverse is on this little switch over here. Um, so, so that's really all there is in here. We try and keep it quite simple. I don't want to put screens in. I don't want to put anything really very fancy. It's very original in there, apart from just a drive and reverse switch, which is nice. Um, and then finally, under the floor there, we've put Dynamat. Um, so Dynamat is basically a, a um, in a sound and a sound and vibration insulator just because there's a lot of road noise coming off a defender when you can't hear the engine up the front it's nice to make it as silent as we can so we just do the floor in that 
it won't stay like this because the owner is gonna cover it in a nice big carpet set um, they've custom made. He's also getting a wooden dash. He's getting new seats. He's getting new wheels. He's getting new everything basically, which is gonna make this thing uh, pretty amazing, I think. Even, well, it's amazing now, so imagine what it's gonna be like later. So now if I take the camera, I'll take you underneath um, and show you the Tesla motor. So because we've got all battery up the front, instead of having a motor under there, we've managed to put more batteries in there, but it means we have to put the motor somewhere else. So the motor sits, if I get down on the floor here, the motor sits there. Um, so Tesla Model 3, and you can see it going down the prop shafts there to the rear diff, and then down the front prop to the front diff. Um, we'll, we'll put this on the lift in a minute so that we can hopefully see it a little bit better. But um, that's where the motor sits. So it's a, it's a pretty cool piece of tech. Um, and really allows us to put a lot of power in these things. And as you see in the, you know, in the rest of the video, this thing absolutely flies off the line. I think it's doing 0 to 60 in about five seconds. Huge torque, huge stopping power. Um, and really it's just a bit of a go-kart. So with, with that, let's jump back in. Let's fly down the hill and uh, we'll take it back to the workshop, get on the ramp, we'll have another look underneath. Um, but yeah, it's a bit of a shame because she's going back to Newcastle tomorrow. Probably we'll never see her again. We'll do all of our software updates over the internet um, but that really is it so she's been a very she's been very well behaved we like this one um, I think it's taken the hearts of my team so um, let's go to the workshop have a look underneath but um, really it's goodbye right we're back in the car now we're about to go to the workshop so I'm just going to show you quickly how it all works um, so you got an original key into the original hole you flick it to there, all the dials start going crazy. So the car is actually now running. All you can hear is a very faint water pump noise because there's a water pump just sort of underneath our seat here. Um, you'll notice that the power steering is super easy, so that's really nice. Now all I have to do is foot on the brake and then I flick this into drive, drive there, um, handbrake off, and off we go very quietly. Um, now, so this is a bit of a campsite up the top here, so it's, uh, there's a lot of people around. It's actually pretty funny driving past people and they're like, why the hell is that um, Defender completely silent? Because these ones, you can see them staring. These ones really are completely silent because uh, there's no gearbox, no transfer case that's 40 years old or whatever. It literally is brand new tech, straight to the diffs. Um, so that's pretty nice. So you'll see, as we get onto the track again, we're going down. About 10 minutes down here is our workshop. So pretty lucky for us, pretty lucky that we work around here because I mean, I don't know if you can see that view, but it's pretty serious. Now there are a lot of um, sort of naysayers on the electric conversion world, which is quite fun. I like it, you know, it's someone to, uh, someone to convince, another person to convince that this is a great idea. But what they often say is you lose the character of your old Defender or your old Series or your old Range Rover, whatever it may be. Now, what I want to try and explain is that you don't. Um, it still rattles. You can still hear the roof. The roof is made of tin. There's loads of wind noise comes in when you're driving around. You can see we're still bouncing around. Nothing like being in a brand new Range Rover. Um, so you still have all of that character. I don't believe that the character of a car is in the engine. Um, so to those who say that you're better off in a petrol defender, I raise you this. Woohoo! It's absolutely wild how fast this car is. Like wild, wild. Right, we'll pick this back up when we get back to the workshop. So uh, stay tuned.
So we're back in the workshop. Um, as you can see, there's a couple of other defenders getting our treatment at the minute. There's also a Range Rover around somewhere, a couple of series, um, and a little Mini on its first ever charge, all, all being worked on at the minute. But back to the main event. Let's put this up in the air and I'll show you how it all works underneath. So now we're underneath. Um, so this is where the business really happens in the car. Now what we've got is where the gearbox and transfer box used to sit, which is what that is there. That's out of a TD5. That big old thing there is the gearbox transfer box, sort of like a four wheel drive system for a Land Rover. That and the engine is replaced by this all in one, one unit. So it really shows the efficiency of it as well because it's three times more powerful than the engine that used to be in here. Um, so really nicely utilizes the space there and it basically sends drive out of the two sides, one to the back diff, one to the front diff. Um, now in a Tesla, to give you an idea, the Tesla motor will have sat in between the back wheels. So it will send drive that way and that way rather than that way and that way. Um, but we basically change the gearing inside there um, so that it's able to run at a suitable RPM for the speed it, well, whilst thinking about what the diff ratios are. Um, and it's just a nice utilization of space. You can see water going into it through that pump there. You can see high voltage going into it through the orange cables there. Um, these are very fancy balanced prop, prop shafts um, because they're obviously running quite extreme angles in the grand scheme of things and that can cause vibration. Um, other things we've got here are some fancy Fox shocks and IBAC springs that the, the client had, um, that the client wanted as an optional extra on top of the conversion just so that it handles a bit more like the power it's sort of got. So, you know, it, it can actually go around corners now without you falling out your seat. Um, it's got some big old new calipers on the back there. Um, they're more for the handbrake than they are for braking uh, because like I said, most of the braking happens through the, through the motor, through re regen, but that's all part of the conversion as well. Um, and then up the front here, you can see the framework for the battery box. So the underneath of the battery box is there. You can see how it, all the framework and how it sits on there. Um, onto all original holes in the chassis. So we don't drill anything, it's all completely reversible. Um, but everything is in there really solid. So that's this Land Rover. As you can see, there's loads more to come, so there'll be loads more videos to come. But I thought I'd give you sort of a detailed overview of how all this stuff works, because you guys have told me out there that you, know, you, you watch videos and you don't really see everything. This is, you know, I'm trying to show you as much as I possibly can because a, I don't believe you'll be able to copy me. Well, good luck if you can copy us. You should be. Um, and B, it's super cool. We want to show it off. You guys could have a conversion like this. This conversion is 46,000 pounds plus that. So it comes out at 55, all in, which I hope is the equivalent of, say, buy, going to Tesla and buying a new car. You're recycling, you're using old parts out of old cars. You're keeping an old, beautiful Land Rover on the road. Um, so if you want one, get in touch on our website. You can call me. Uh, my number is 07413-296-293. That goes directly to me. You can talk to me about it. You can understand how it all works even further, get some questions. But um, yeah, that's us. We're Electric Car Converts. Write any comments below, any questions, and I'll get back to them, I promise. Thanks very much for watching. Please subscribe.